Hey booktube, uh, this is present day me coming in to say really quick that um, the me in this video is from the past. This video was filmed pre-lockdown, pre-everything that's been going on. So any information you're getting in this video about my plans to read or what I'm going to do or anything like that, uh, it's all highly outdated and I just wanted to say that before this video commenced because I filmed this a long time ago and I'm only just now posting it. I think even by the time I had edited this I'd put in like a little author's note at the beginning to say how old it was and it's still been like six months even since then. Uh, please take everything I say in this video with like not even just a pinch of salt just like a mountain of salt. So much salt. <laughs> because I didn't read a single one of these books. Um, this was my TBR. Uh, spoilers. I didn't read a single one. I, I maybe will do a wrap up on it, but it was disastrous. Um, so anytime you hear me say that I'm gonna read something or that like, you know, it's definitely on my TBR, I just literally ignore it. I've tried to cut out as much as I can, but being a TBR video, that's very hard. So um, if you're thinking, oh, I can't wait to see this in a wrap up, it's, it's not gonna happen. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> My name is The Book Mage and I am so excited to finally be doing a video that I have had in mind for like almost a year. I've been secretly hyped about this TBR for like so long. <laughs> and now I finally get to do it and I finally get to read these books. I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited to do this. So if you haven't guessed by the title, for the next month I am going to be reading nothing but self-published books. And that kind of necessitated a haul. So today I get to haul I think 11? self-published novels for you guys. Mainly just for me though. I'm just, I'm mainly excited for me. <laughs> I ended up going on a journey through Amazon because, believe it or not, you can't search by like self-published or traditionally published books on Amazon. There's no way to do that. So finding some of these books took <laughs> a lot of digging and again, most of these I had just never heard of before. I actively went looking for self-published books. So hopefully, I'm going to be bringing you guys some new books that you may not have heard of that are published just by the authors themselves and I'm pretty sure these are all self-published. It's quite hard to know because sometimes it'll say just like it's published by Amazon and then other times it will be like, I guess, the author's own sort of very small indie or just one person publishing company so none of them are to my knowledge traditionally published. I'm hoping maybe I will find like some new unknown or niche authors that I will just love. I'm hoping that I will love all of these books but I would really like to find like a new favourite. Hopefully something that I can gush over. <laughs> that is what I'm hoping for anyway. <laughs> so this is both collectively a haul of these books and also my TBR for this next month. <laughs> I will say like explicitly not every single book in this haul is going to make it onto my TBR because I think I have 11 books in this haul and I don't, I mean I could potentially read 11 books next month but I don't think that's going to happen so I am going to prioritise the ones that I initially saw that sort of like sparked this idea and then anything else I read in the month is just going to be whatever takes my fancy. I'm just going to mood read for a bit this month so hopefully my wrap up at the end of the month will just be like at least a little bit <laughs> of a surprise. <laughs> Without any further ado, I really want to get onto this haul because I'm just, I'm so, so excited. I'm so excited to just talk about the books in this haul and I'm just, I'm just so hyped. <laughs> so the first book in my haul is The Dark Sea Beyond by Rai Sobo. And this is the first book I've ever bought that has a gnome as the main character. So this book is about a gnome called Ferrin who gets accused of a crime that he did not commit and has to flee his city and flee across the sea on a ship. And I believe this story follows his journey across the sea and all the trials and tribulations that happen upon like a ship crossing the sea. The synopsis doesn't give much more information than that but I was initially really captured by like this cover. It's a really gorgeous cover and the plot almost gives me like slight Odyssey vibes. I mean who says Odysseus cannot be a gnome? <laughs> And the reason I'm starting with this one is because this is the first book that I saw. I saw this one advertised on Instagram and I just thought it looked beautiful. And yeah, I put it in my Amazon wish list and couldn't stop thinking about like the beautiful cover and the fact that I've never read a story about a gnome protagonist and what better time to change that, honestly. Book number two in my haul is Quill by A.C. Cobble and this one is a little bit of a thick boy. So the inhabitants of this world believe that sorcery is long since dead but it turns out it very much is not. The son of the king is a cartographer and he goes out to a remote village to investigate like this occultist murder that suggests that sorcery is coming back into the world and there's a girl in this who is like an apprentice to like an assassin priest and she may or may not be able to do magic and adjust it honestly sounds 
so interesting. And do you know, part of the thing that really drew me to this is because I read Shadow and Bone last year. And at the beginning of the story, the protagonist is a cartographer, she's a map maker. And I'm really sorry, but I honestly would have much preferred the story of Shadow and Bone to just be about a cartographer and, like, her cartographer buddies. I'm so mad <laughs> that that wasn't the plot. <laughs> You know me, I love maps, I love fantasy maps, and I did also recently read a story last month, um, The Bone Houses, where one of the main characters in that was also a cartographer. So I guess I'm just drawn to stories about maps and map makers. It will also be no surprise to any of you on this channel to hear me talking about a book where, like, magic is forgotten and coming back and potentially taboo. Like, it's my jam, it's my absolute bread and butter. I love books with kind of plots like these, and honestly the cover is just so gorgeous. I really love this cover. This is one of the first ones I found when I was sort of like browsing for self-published works and I don't know, it's kind of just been in my Amazon wishlist for so long now that like I couldn't not get it for like this month's reading challenge. I just, I'm honestly just really excited to get to this and just see what it's about and I really hope that it's like lives up to the hype that I've built up in my head over the past several months about like how good and how much my taste this could possibly be. Okay so taking a brief deviation from fantasy, I also picked up Bloodstained Tea by Amy Tasakada. This one I heard about on Kate Kavanagh's channel. She did a video where she asked her brother to guess the plot of various self-published work based on, like, the title and the cover. And ever since I saw it in that video, I've just kind of half intended to pick it up, so obviously, what better time than now? So this one, I believe, follows a man called Nell, who I think is trying to escape his past as a Yakuza by opening a tea house. So the Yakuza are like the Japanese mob, and he's trying to leave that life behind. But I believe an injured man shows up on his doorstep one night and sort of complicates the issue. I think this does also feature a male-male romance. And honestly, I'm fairly interested in a lot of Japanese culture. I studied a little bit of the Japanese language for like a couple years. I'm not very good at it. I cannot read or speak Japanese very well, but I can do like the bare minimum. <laughs> And I don't talk about it much on my channel, but I have been interested in a lot of Japanese media and culture for several years now. I have family who occasionally live and work over there. And I don't, for whatever reason, pick up many Japanese novels, I guess. It's a setting that I love in TV and film and anime and manga, but I seem to never stray from fantasy. So, so I will be picking up this one set in Kyoto. I'm pretty sure this is one of the ones that I really do want to try and get to this month, so this will be like high up on my TBR. Okay, the next book in my haul has, again, a seriously beautiful cover, and I love it so much. And that is The Rest is Silence by Chi Rempel. Can we just admire this for a second? So this one, I believe, is either a retelling of or inspired by Shakespeare's Hamlet. So this story follows a prince who is betrothed to his beautiful best friend, but unfortunately, he's not attracted to women, he's only attracted to men. And he has a pretty big crush on his other best friend, the son of, like, the captain of the guard. So I think this is going to be a messy kind of gay love triangle and I don't know, I'm all here for that. <laughs> this one I was mainly drawn to just by like the absolutely beautiful cover and I do really like Shakespeare and I feel like seeing like a bit more of a modern or diverse twist on something that's at least Shakespeare inspired is kind of piquing my interest. It is also very short. The only thing I will say about this is even with like the stunningly beautiful cover, I think the spine is printed backwards because it's upside down. <laughs> but given that it's like self-published and printed by Amazon. I don't know if like occasional misprints are sort of like something that might be common buying these books. I have no idea. But it does sort of tickle me because sometimes when I look at it on my shelf I try and read it and I'm like, no way it's this way. <laughs> so the next book in my haul, I think maybe the shortest book that I'm reading this month, and that is It Takes a Thief to Catch a Sunrise by Rob J. Hayes. So when I put this in my Amazon basket, a quite a while ago actually, um, I'd never really heard of Rob J. Hayes but I was sort of torn between either getting this or one of his other novels and I went with this one because I think it's kind of like steampunky but since then I have heard absolutely fantastic praise for Rob J Hayes and like some of his other series I don't have those particularly like well praised series with me but it does really bode well and I am now like way more excited to read this than I was before again finally like self-published authors getting a lot of praise and getting spoken about a lot in like the bookish community really draws my attention to them and it's just another reason why I feel like I need to buy and support more works by self-published authors. So I don't 
actually know the plot of this. The synopsis is very vague, but I know that it is about thieves, and I'm pretty sure that Steampunky vibe comes from the fact that there are schematics or plans for, like, the world's first airship, which is very subtly rendered here on the front of the cover, so I'm hoping that we're gonna get, like, some sky pirate type vibes. <laughs> you can tell I read the Edge Chronicles as a kid. <laughs> So yes, steampunky vibes, airships, and thieves. Like, it was enough to draw me in, and I do quite like the cover. I will give you the quote on the back that kind of solidified my interest though, and that is, the trick I find is not to break in. No. The trick is to convince the mark to invite you in. And I'm not just drawn to that because it reminds me of Brynjolf from Skyrim. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited to be picking up my first Rob J. Hayes book, and I'm really hoping that this will lead me onto more of his work. I'm really hoping that I will like this, and potentially then I will try out some of his other works, the ones that have been like really hyped up over the past couple months. So yeah, very excited to get to this. Book number six, and I feel like some people are going to know exactly why I was drawn to this one when I hold up the cover. It is The Sunderlands by Anastasia King. Anybody want to venture a guess? What drew me to this book? <laughs> so yes, um, it gives me kind of Dragon Age vibes, and if you don't know, Dragon Age is like my favourite thing ever, it's my favourite video game, and it's my favourite like fantasy realm, I just, I love it so much, don't come at me, I know it's not perfect, but it's perfect to me, and I love it, and everything about it. So yeah, the cover kind of gives me a little bit of like Danish elf vibes, I don't know if it's like the pattern, or whether it's the wolf, but definitely the synopsis like gave me like high-key Dragon Age vibes, and so in this world there seems to be a war going on between men and elves. The elves live in clans in a place called the Sunderlands, and the main character Keras may be the only one who can save them. She has some sort of tie to the god of death, and but she is struggling with the decision of whether she should save her homeland or save herself. So yeah, I think it was like the whole elven clans in a specific place and warring with a race of men, god of death, the symbol of wolves, I'm just, I'm getting a lot of like high key dragon age vibes and I'm hoping that it's like different enough that it feels, you know, different, but honestly, if I get just like a little bit of like Dalish vibe from this book, I feel like I could potentially really love it. <laughs> so yeah, I couldn't really stop thinking about this one, I, surprisingly, I don't tend to read a lot of books with elves in, and I love elves, I need more elves in my life, so yes, decided to pick this one up and it's one of the bigger books that I'm picking up this month, but it also does have like beautiful illustrations and things in it, and the like the chapter headers are really pretty, so I think a lot of care has been taken, at least definitely with the formatting of this book, and I'm just very excited for like honestly all the pretty pictures and all the aesthetic. Like I just want all of the elven aesthetic. <laughs> okay, my next book is one where I really can't explain to you why I picked it up or like specifically what drew me to it, other than I was just drawn to it. And I don't know why. <laughs> I just was. And that is The Stage Awaits by Jacob Hutner. So this book follows a soldier called Karth, who I think is in the King's army, and one day when something goes wrong, he has to decide whether he's going to defect and make his own decisions, or whether he's going to continue to follow orders and keep with his duty. Synopsis kind of makes mention of like, almost like a bit of a ragtag group of adventurers. Yeah, there's a queen, a royal, a mage, a struggling dweller, the maker born. I don't know what a lot of these things mean, but it sounds fascinating, and I really like, sort of, much in the style of Dragon Age Origins, a bunch of just like ragtag nobody everybody's all coming together to do something, save the kingdom, save the world, that sort of thing. I feel like the cover for this one is somehow super bland, but also somehow I just really like the vibe of it, and I can't figure out why, I just really do. <laughs> this is one where, especially because of like the vagueness of the synopsis, I don't really know much about the story going into it. Not that that's an issue for me, because I tend to go into things mostly kind of blind. But yeah, it's hard for me to say entirely whether I'll be into this, but I do like the whole, you know, group of misfits and random people. I just, I like that vibe, so I'm hoping that this one will give me what I'm looking for. Okay, the next book is a bit of an unusually sized paperback, but it is one where just the cover, for whatever reason, just really got me, and I quite like it. And that is A Cell Sword's Compassion by Jacob Peppers. This cover has all sorts of stuff going on, but I honestly really kind of like this like weird neon like fantasy kind of vibe. It's a very good colour scheme. It's like one of my favourite colour schemes, and I, th I think that, that honestly the book just drew me in with pretty colours. I'm a very simple magpie at heart. <laughs> so this one I believe follows a sort of rough, embittered, sellsword like a sword for hire, whose only loyalty is to money to the next payment. But when one of his jobs goes wrong, he ends up having to smuggle the princess out of a dangerous city. And I think I really kind of like characters like that, especially if there's any sort of like bitter old men and redemption arcs and possibly that sort of vibe. From the look of the cover, I'm getting like 
magical sort of like sword and sorcery type vibes and and I don't know I kind of just sometimes like reading about like shitty money hungry thieves who get in like way over their head like it's such a common trope but I really always like it when it happens yeah I'm really hoping that this one will be to my taste but honestly one of the main reasons was just because I couldn't stop thinking about this goddamn colorful cover in fact is this font called like is it Orpheus or Morpheus I feel like every fantasy book like uses this font it's like one of the default fantasy fonts <laughs> Okay, I'm down to my last three. Okay, so my next book was, again, kind of a cover by, definitely not normally the book that I would tend to go for, both based on the cover and what I think it's about, but I am, I don't, I just kind of have an inkling that maybe I will enjoy this one. I don't know why, I don't know why I want to read this, but I feel like this has a lot of vibes that I tend to like, but that also this isn't typically the kind of book that I would read or reach for. So again, I'm going like a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I think there's enough there to like, you know, keep me grounded. And that is Blood Rain, A Song of Death by Helix Parker. So this, I'm seeing dragons, I'm seeing definite like warlord looking vampire guy, and some dead bone looking orc people. Um, I would tell you about the synopsis, but there isn't one. <laughs> I cannot remember what this is about from when I bought it. I'm pretty sure it's like a fantasy-ish, dark, kind of cliche gothic. I'm pretty sure it has vampires. From seeing dragons on the front, I'm assuming there's also dragons. These are things that I like. I feel like normally I wouldn't tend to gravitate towards this style of book, but considering that I'm going out of my way to try new things and like look at new authors, I don't know, the cover, like, I kind of dig it. <laughs> it reminds me of like so many of like the posters I used to have on my wall as like an itty bitty baby back goth. Definitely also reminds me of like a lot of PS2 games like that were kind of aimed at like goth and alternative people, but again, I kind of like that vibe. I think this might also be a bind up of like several like short novellas put into one book. Either way, it's not that long in total and I don't know, I just kind of wanted to try something new. I was drawn to like the old school alt vibes. <laughs> just let me live. <laughs> Definitely running out of space for these books. Okay, but these are my last two so like we might just make it. <laughs> okay, the penultimate book in my book haul is one that I think is so my vibe and that even just from the cover and the synopsis I am so looking forward to getting to. And that is City of Whispers by J.D.L. Russell. So this book is about a city on the brink of collapse. The magical guardians of the city have all disappeared or have been driven out or killed. The government is full of corruption and suddenly the ruler of the city mysteriously dies. So there's a lot of shit going down in a short space of time. So I'm pretty sure this book features like magic and grimdarky political intrigue and I think also again another like ragtag bunch of misfits trying to solve the mystery and again maybe save the city. I just think that this looks so atmospheric and I really do like a good like political machinations magical fantasy kind of mystery story and I really think that this could give me what I'm looking for. It's given me almost like maybe a little bit of like the gutter prayer shadow saint kind of vibes what with like the fantasy political aspect and yeah I'm really interested in getting around to this one. I think this one could be potentially one that maybe I would have picked up even if I wasn't doing this sort of like specific haul specific like TBR. I feel like given the synopsis this could have potentially wound up on one of my TBRs like just by chance if I'd never decided to do this. So I'm really hoping it's gonna be good and yeah I'm really looking forward to this one. And the last book in my haul and definitely the biggest book in my haul is also a sci-fi. And that book is The Measurements of Decay by K.K. Eden. This book, when I saw the cover, I was just like 100% intrigued, on board, I don't know what it is about like this kind of cover and like the promise of like a weird kind of like, I almost want to say like a bit of a grimdark sci-fi? Something about that vibe was just like, I couldn't not buy this book. <laughs> so from the synopsis, this book follows two different timelines. So in the future, like a lot of the star systems around Earth have been colonized and there is like interstellar travel. And for the most part, humanity spend most of their time in like hallucinations. Almost I'm thinking like VR type fantasies and that sort of thing. One of our protagonists refuses to live like that and so lives out in exile on a starship out in space. And then there is another timeline in the modern day where I think a philosopher has figured out that like people's lack of communication skills is what's contributing to things like people's declining mental health. 
And so he's on like a quest to, I guess, prove his theory and attempt to save humanity. But at the same time, he has to deal with like his own morality and mentality and that sort of thing. And then like in both of these timelines and like throughout history, there is a girl who keeps appearing all throughout history. And I think she's somehow tied to like this mystery. Honestly, it just sounds so weird and so good. And I really like the sort of like human aspect like the whole human thing like at the core of the story it's not just like a big you know galactic gunfight aliens space opera type thing this is much closer to the sort of sci-fi that i think i like which is where it has like you know this whole human question this whole like weird moral conundrum at the heart of it and i think this could be really interesting i'm really hoping like especially like the vibe that this cover is giving me and the synopsis i'm just i'm really hoping that having only been reading like little bits of sci-fi this month like this is a big sci-fi commitment like he he's a chunky boy and so yeah i'm really hoping that this will prove to be like that sort of sci-fi that i really enjoy and you know maybe like branch out a little bit from fantasy i don't do it often but when i do I want it to be good, and I really think that this could be really good. <sighs> so, there we go. Those were all the self-published books that I am hauling this month, so that is all 11 of them. I'm really hoping that this will help me find like some new authors and some new amazing worlds that I would have absolutely potentially overlooked if I hadn't gone like actively looking for some of these works. I definitely will say like from my own perspective, I think like seeing things occasionally like posted on Instagram or Twitter or talked about by other booktubers definitely do capture my attention. So hopefully this has led some of you to hear about some new books that maybe you you would not have seen before and maybe they will be like totally the kind of thing that you would like to read and hopefully I can suggest some like cool new books to you guys. I'm hoping that with my wrap up I will love all of these and that I can gush about all of them. That is my hope but yeah so <laughs> with that said this is my haul, this is my TBR, I'm super excited, I cannot wait to start reading these. I have been like eyeing up some of these books for so long like eight nine months ish. I'm just I'm so goddamn hype. <laughs> So with that said, thank you guys so so much for watching, I hope you enjoy this kind of, I guess like a themed haul? We'll call this like a themed haul. It's sort of like a mashup video because this is also my TBR. <laughs> Absolutely do let me know if you've read any of these or if you're interested in picking any of these up. And other than that, I think it is time for me to go and you know, I've got plenty of reading to get through now so I better make a start. And yeah, with that said, thank you guys for watching and peace out booktube. Mm -hmm.